Hello everyone and welcome back to the CDL podcast channel. This is not going to be a normal podcast um, and to be honest I've been saying that at the beginning of the last few because uh, we're in the off season so until we start to get more and more roster mania news I mean right now there's been a lot of updates but as of right now it's mostly just people being dropped because you can't officially sign contracts for about another week. Um, so as we start to get like roster news and rumors we'll probably do more podcast episodes specifically talking about that. Um, but for now, we're just going to do mini content pieces. Uh, and, you know, I just recently moved back into college. I uh, had s- just an interesting, busy week. Had some family members back home um, that tested positive for COVID. They're all basically in the healthcare field. So they uh, were pretty high at risk uh, with patients and stuff. So it's been a little bit of an interesting and rough week with that. So I've been a little busy to try to get content out. But uh, everybody's doing good. So that's um, really good. I had to get a test, obviously, because I was exposed to those family members and mine came back negative uh, and I'm feeling good. And um, all my family and everything that had it is feeling good. So that's great. A little bit of a relief kind of can get back into the content game. Um, but if you saw the title of this video, you clicked on it. Uh, this is going to be probably a shorter video or I'm going to try to keep it shorter. You know how I am. I get pretty long winded and uh, talk about this stuff because I'm so passionate about it. Uh, but this is going to be a video doing like a little bit of a Q&A. Now, obviously, we don't have a million followers on Twitter like a lot of the people that do Q&As and the pros and stuff. Um, but we had a couple listeners that constantly uh, are listening and they sent in like a list of questions they had. And they're all honestly fantastic questions. So I said, you know what? Um, <clears throat> I'm going to go through these questions. Uh, they had a lot of good talking points on them, too. So I was like, I'll go through the questions and offer my insight on them. So this is just like a basically all uh, competitive COD and Call of Duty um, Q&A that we're going to do. Uh, so shout out to the people that sent in some questions. If I didn't miss a question that you DM me on Twitter or in the comments or something, I'm extremely sorry. Uh, I commented again and I'll add it into another video or something. Obviously, we can't do Q&As uh, super often because it's not like we have thousands and thousands of s- subscribers uh, to constantly submit questions. Uh, so we're going to get into it. Um, the first question I wanted to answer is from Luke. Uh, if you watch the videos or have been watching for a while, he's pretty consistent with uh, commenting on the videos and watching. He's been a supporter for a long time, so shout out to him. Uh, and he asked the question, um, sent it on Twitter, and said, um, if I could start a COD esports team, what would I call it and which players would I realistically sign? Um, and at the time he sent this, it was actually still 5v5. It wasn't announced that it was 4v4, so I was kind of thinking about it in 5v5 terms. But now that we're 4v4, I'm going to think about it in 4v4 terms. Um, and as for a name, I kind of have a name of a team I wanted to start in mind, but I also kind of want to keep that under wraps in case I do uh, that after college. I don't want uh, the name stolen because I think it's a pretty good one. Um, but other than that, I don't really have a name besides the one I've been set on for years. It used to be like the name of um, the team that me and my friends kind of made when we were younger, and I always thought the name sounded cool. So I don't really want to reveal it. I'm sorry. But um, if I had. You also said realistically sign, which to me, if I was like a new org, I couldn't really sign that many high tier players because obviously they're going to want to sign with like FaZe or Huntsman over a new org. So I'm just going to say if I could sign any four players in the league, let's say they just all became free agents. Um, if I could sign anybody and it wasn't completely unrealistic because these people won't leave their team, I'm signing Scump and Formal first. Uh, no doubt about it. They may not be the absolute best players in the world, but they're some of the top players. Uh, they have the biggest following. And to me, part of being a successful team is obviously not only winning, but it's... Uh, gaining followers, producing content, um, kind of the hex way and building a successful business. Um, and the second you get scump on your team, you become the instantly most popular team and formal is his duo and a very good man. AR, so he comes with, um, and then I'm signing who I think is the best player in the league right now, a BZ as my entry sub. And I am also bringing on Kenny. I think the game is going more towards having three subs in at all times than one AR. But I think if he had to, Kenny could pull out the flex kind of like he did on hundred thieves and black ops four and be the perfect flex. Um, but if it's more realistic, if I can't sign Scump and Formal, uh, obviously due to the fact that they would never leave Huntsman, then I'd probably go Simp and Abizi, um on the subs because I think they're an amazing duo. I'm still taking Kenny because he's like my favorite player. Uh, and then I think I go Octane on the AR, uh, Octane on the AR, Kenny on a flex, and then Simp and Abizi on subs. My team's going undefeated. <laughs> so shout out to Luke for the question. And then the next like list of questions was sent in by Kyle. I'm sure if you watch the videos, like I said, you've probably seen him in the comments down below. He comments on basically every video, um, pretty much for the whole season. He's been a longtime supporter, so shout out to him. And he sent me like a list of questions, and they were all pretty thought provoking. Obviously, some of them are a little shorter to answer. Um, because they're a little more simple and then some are a little more complex. So I think he sent about 10 of them in, yeah. And I got the list uh, pulled up and I'm just gonna read them off and then give maybe a short or long answer to them. Um, so the first question he had was, 
With the move to franchising, why aren't player contracts made public information? In traditional pro sports, we know the length and money amount players are signed for. Um, so why is there secrecy around this in the Call of Duty scene? Um, and technically, obviously, I'm not the CDL, so I don't have... This isn't like some official answer for why this is the case. Um, but I feel like it's more public in traditional sports because those players are making so much more money. The contracts are so much bigger. Um, so like if some guy gets signed to like a small deal um it's not i don't know it doesn't like hurt the team chemistry because like if he gets a one million dollar deal it's like okay he's still making a million dollars but like a smaller contract than cod could be like 50k because that's the minimum and then some other player could be making one and a half million a year um i feel like pro sports just has an established culture of like they understand like the best player makes this much and maybe the the worst players make a lot less money and that's more accepted i feel like in call of duty we have a lot more fragile egos i guess if that makes sense um and people are making less like you don't really want to publicly announce like this guy's only making 50k because it might make him feel kind of bad uh and the money isn't at the insane astronomical levels it is in like the nfl or nba um so that would be my guess is that since we aren't at the huge money amounts they don't want to like expose players um and make people feel bad for only making like 50k when their teammates making 1.5 mil or something um so that would be my guess just because we're young in terms of the amount of years we've been around compared to pro sports uh make a lot less money so they maybe don't want to reveal that to the public that that would be my only guess i'm not really sure other than that i think uh to help boost team chemistry and not um have it hurt by the discrepancy in salaries would maybe be my guess i don't have a great answer for that one i've always kind of wondered that too that's what i would say the secrecy is because they don't want the public um to know just yet maybe if we start to get into where players are making 10 million and have a minimum of like a two million dollar salary uh, there won't become as many arguments between the players like why is he making more money and we'll see that um in the future i would bet many many years on the future we'll probably see it uh, and the second question he had was do you think the allure of warzone among other games um and full-time streaming will draw pros away from the cdl i do think it's certainly possible um that warzone can draw people away because like i mean you've got guys like scump if scump went into like full zone uh, i said full zone uh, full-time warzone streaming he'd obviously blow up he's so insanely popular same with like formal um, a lot of the big guys like Clay, if he did that, could be huge in it. Uh, obviously, Karma is Krim could do that. Um, any of these popular players, especially the ones that have played for Optic, even like Dashy, TJ, those guys, um, if they went to full-time streaming um, in Warzone, it could obviously make them more popular. But to me, the thing that keeps them going is competitive drive. Um, competitive drive, especially if you've played sports in your life, it's just something that the the need and hunger to win um maybe in some people it's not that high uh because they might not be that competitive i know people like that but for me i'm a really competitive person too um which is why i love even like ranked cod even though i'm not playing at a pro level just like the drive uh and competitive um nature to win is just so high in some people so i think that uh is what keeps them competing and then your people that maybe don't have as high of a competitive drive are lured into full-time streaming because they don't care as much about um winning championships and stuff so yes, I would say definitely Warzone and full-time streaming is going to draw pros away from the CDL, possibly, especially this year. Um, if the like veteran pros get cut and can't find a roster with the limited size, I think some of them certainly could go to Warzone and full-time streaming. Um, but I also think it's not as prevalent to just drag them away in the prime of their career because they know they can only compete at a high level and a pro level for so long, and it's a small window, and they know streaming will always be there after. So while it can draw them away, I do think with their competitive uh, edge and the limited window they can compete in, um, rather than the bigger window they can stream in, I think it doesn't do as much as some people uh, seem to say. Because otherwise, if it did, Scump would have left for Fortnite, and a bunch of them would have left for Fortnite. Um, the next question is a tough one. Uh, who will retire first? Scump, Formal, Clay, or Krim, or someone else? Ah, uh, man. Um, this is a tough one because I think I want to say Clay. I'm not going to do this someone else because I think that there's an extreme number of other people that could retire. Because once again, I believe these questions were sent in before um, the 4v4 uh, an announcement was made so i think a lot of players like i think aches could potentially retire i think even guys like looney if they don't find a team could just say ah screw it i'm hanging it up um i think i mean we saw jcap hang it up i think there's a lot of people that are going to realize they can't get a roster spot and they might retire so i'm not going to do the, someone else i'm going to go from those four uh i don't think it'll be Krim. i think he almost might play the longest even though he's a little older than i believe he's older than scump and formal um I don't think it'll be formal because i do think he still loves to compete and i think him and scump are going to retire together i do I think it's going to be Clay. It's the easy answer because he's the oldest. I think my last choice would be Krim. I could see Scump and Formal going like two more years and retiring um, or something together. 
And then I could see Clay maybe being like, I'm 30 now. I kind of want to be the first guy to win a championship when I'm 30 and then keep going because Clay's weird like that. So I'm going to say Clay is a safe bet. But otherwise, I think Scump and Formal will go out together second. And then I think Krim will go out last. I think Krim just loves competing so much. He'll stay like forever until he's 50. Uh, now, the next one's who's my favorite caster? Um, so obviously, I don't think I can really put like. I'm going to say my favorite caster, like play-by-play -play guy, and then my favorite like uh, color commentator, like analyst. Uh, so like for play-by-play, -play, it'd be Lando, um, Maven, or Miles are like the three main. I don't, I'm don't, i not really going to throw uh, Lando and Study in there. They're a little bit too new to be like my favorite. And plus, I do prefer the other um, duos over them. And that's nothing against Lando and Study at all. They just don't have as much experience. They're going to get way better with time if they continue to be employed by the CDL. Um, but for now, it's really between the other um, set of duos. I liked Momo and Benson when they were in the CDL, uh, but they were definitely not. They would never have been my favorite. Um, I think it's pretty hard not to say Maven as my favorite like play-by-play -play guy because he's just so synonymous. He's like the face of Call of Duty uh, casting. I love him, but I think, I mean, like Maven by default, obviously, yes, he's everyone's favorite. Um, but I think Miles is almost my favorite play-by-play -play guy. I think Miles always reminds me a little bit of Courage, kind of, and I loved Courage back in the day. I've still supported his stream since he's left. So I think I kind of want to say Miles is my favorite, although I love Maven too. And then for play-by-play, -play, I love Chance, but Merc's my guy. Merc is definitely my clear favorite play-by-play -play guy. I think he offers so much insight. He's also super well-spoken and is entertaining. Could He could even do play-by-play -play himself, but I just love the insight he offers. As you all know, I love the analytics, the stats, um, the little things that are involved with the game, and Merc seems to explain them so well during the cast. So I'm going to go Miles and Merc, but I obviously love Maven and Chance as well. Uh... And next question, why are CDL teams tied to cities when the majority of fans will follow their favorite players regardless of city affiliation? Uh, this is a great question. The only thing I can think of is Activision said, you know what, city-based um, teams work for uh, work for their, um, what do you want to call it? I can't think. Uh, for traditional sports. Uh, they work for traditional sports. Um and they wanted to go with that route is the only reason I can think of, uh, as well as um, the Overwatch League. It was also created by Activision Blizzard, and it was before Call of Duty, and they went with um, cities, so I would assume that they didn't want to like change that up. So they went with that. Um, I don't really think it's the best thing. I think it's I think it has um, its positive and its negatives. I believe it's purely because they wanted uh, to follow the traditional sports model because they've seen it work. That's the reason I believe. Um, since the question is, why are their teams tied to cities? I believe it's because that Activision um, and the older people in Activision that don't know esports as well said, you know what, um, the Dallas Cowboys, the Green Bay Packers, that works for them, so we're going to go city-based. I will say it has positive and, positives and negatives. If you were like a huge Hex fan, um, but you live in Dallas, and now you're kind of like, man, their biggest rivals are the Empire, I'm from Dallas, I kind of want to support my city, and you're kind of forced to not be a Hex fan anymore, that kind of sucks. Um, and I don't like that for regionalization, but the one reason I will say that regionalization is almost good is because, like I said, when I was at the event in Minnesota, those players would not normally have many fans, uh, and the whole arena was going nuts for the Rocker when they were playing, um, simply because they were Minnesota's team. So that is a positive of it. Uh, it, it brings new fans into teams that otherwise wouldn't have fans. So that's, that is one positive. Um, the next question is, why were Optic and FaZe allowed to keep their branding? I guess I don't know the technical um like the absolute like 100 percent correct reason but i believe i did hear something on some podcast with like i think like banks was in it maybe and like keemstar and hex and nature or something and i think they said that phase found a way around the like they couldn't technically keep their own org names which is like i think that was an issue for 100 thieves they didn't they wanted to be called like the los angeles 100 thieves or whatever and they couldn't technically do that since that's an existing organization um so I believe the answer for FaZe was because technically FaZe is called FaZe Clan. is like official legal name. Um, and they didn't name themselves the Atlanta FaZe Clan. They named themselves the Atlanta FaZe. Uh, so I think that like, I don't know how OGLA did it because they're technically called Optic Gaming LA, um, which their name is like officially Optic Gaming. So I'm not really sure how that worked. Couldn't tell you with that one really. Maybe it's because they call themselves OGLA all the time and not Los Angeles Optic Gaming. Maybe because they flipped it around. I have no idea with that one. Um, but I guess that would make sense. Like Toronto is owned by Splice. So they the Splice is just called Splice, not like Splice Gaming or Splice Clan. So I guess they couldn't just use the name Splice. I think that's how it works. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, another question is, do you think that Modern Warfare could have been a good competitive game if it was 4v4, had developer support, and played more traditional? Um, I do think it could have been a 
decent game if it was 4v4 and had dev support. Um, and the played more traditional, I think, yes, if that was all true, it would still be one of the worst games because the time to kill didn't allow for you to have like legit gunfights. The movement just wasn't very fun to watch. Um, if it had dev support, it would obviously be better. 4v4 always makes the competitive game better. The thing is, even if it played with traditional spawns, uh, it was 4v4 and had dev support, the maps still were horrible, which I think would make it more of a bottom tier competitive game. Um, now, if we were saying like the time to kill was increased, it was 4v4, the maps were completely changed to be three lane maps, the spawns were normal, then yeah, it would play good. But then we're just making it into like a completely like standard amazing COD, so that just that just doesn't work. No, I, I really don't think there was any way that Modern Warfare could have been fixed unless they completely changed the maps, the spawns, uh, and all that, and had complete developer support, which is a little bit unrealistic to ask for. That basically, I'm saying Modern Warfare would have been good if it wouldn't have been Modern Warfare. So no, I don't think there was any way Modern Warfare could have been good competitively. Um, I've got like three more questions left that were sent in. Uh, this one is, what game mode do you hope replaces Dom in Black Ops Cold War? Um, there are two game modes for me that I hope replace Dom. I mean, if it was up to me and I was being unrealistic, I would hope that they had a third game mode uh, where they introduced jetpacks into only that third game mode uh, and it was played as uplink that would be the dream uplink is the best third map to watch in history it is it is the most like black ops 3 when it went from hardpoint to a search to my favorite game modes and then to uplink i mean uplink is the best to watch for a third game mode we've ever had so in my um obviously completely unrealistic hopes i hope that they throw in jetpacks for the third game mode only and we play uplink that's not going to happen though so my real answer is control um i think as a third game mode, I just have never really liked CTF. I'm a faster paced player. I like to just fly around and kind of make plays. And uh, I can obviously slow it down for CTF. I, I know how to play the game. I slow it down for CTF. I play correctly and all that. Um, but I just think CTF is boring to watch. When you get in like a three minute stalemate, it's like, okay, come on, somebody make something happen. Uh, and control was a little bit more exciting when it got down to like a 2v2 in lives and like somebody had to cap a zone. I thought Control was a little bit more exciting. It's still not the best game mode, um, but I preferred it over CTF. Uh, I don't really know our other options. Dom is horrible. I will take CTF over Dom 100 times out of 100. Anything but Dom, honestly. I will take CTF or Control 100% over Dom. I mean, if Control is not an option, it's like, what do you want, CTF or Dom? I'm begging you, please, CTF. It is so much better to play and watch than Dom. Dom is horrible. Uh, so, yeah, I'd... My number one choice to replace Dom as a third game mode would be, uh, it'd be Uplink if I could, obviously, but that's unrealistic. Uh, so then it'd be Control, and if that can't happen, it's CTF. Just don't bring us back, Dom, please. And I don't really want, like, Blitz or anything back. Um, so yeah, i choose Control. Uh, and then second to last question uh, that Kyle sent in is, who will win champs first, Octane or Envoy? And man, you put me on the spot with this one. Uh, it seems like Envoy is going to stick with the Huntsman and, like, the Hex brand forever so it almost feels like he's the more safe pick because you don't like i mean you think octane's always going to get an amazing team because he's octane but i mean look his team was trash this year i do think he's going to get a good team this year though um and it feels like if envoy is able to stick on with the hex and scump and formal uh like kind of group and stay on huntsman he has a really good chance but i also think octane's like the best main ar in the world so if he gets a good team he has a good chance that's a really tough one I'm going to choose Envoy, though, because I think before they retire, Formal, Scump are going to get another ring, and I think if they get Dashy, they have a decent chance to do it this year with that absolutely disgusting roster talent-wise on paper. See how they mesh. Uh, I obviously think Octane has an extremely good chance to win champs as well, but I think I know who Envoy is probably going to be playing with for the next two to three years, and I don't know who Octane is, which is why I go with Envoy. Now, if Octane's roster comes out and it's absolutely disgusting, I reserve the right to change this answer. Uh, but... Just because I know who he's going to be playing with for probably the next two years minimum, I'm going to go with Envoy. And the last question we are going to do in the video, who is the most underrated or underappreciated pro? Um, so I kind of, like, I wanted to answer these questions on the fly so I don't have, like, specific um, things typed out. But I wanted to go, when I saw this question, the uh, first person that came to my mind instantly based off Modern Warfare was Hook. I think Hook was like number one in the league in kills. But now if you've been watching COD for a few years, I do not think Hook is the most underrated or underappreciated player at all over the last few years because Hook has even been overrated at times. Hook is an insane talent, but people were calling him the GOAT before he even had won a tournament. In World War II and Black Ops 4, people were literally calling him like the GOAT um, before he'd even won a tournament. So 
I think in Modern Warfare, who gives the most underappreciated? Because people talked about Clay being the MVP at times. Krim is Krim. He's amazing. Shotzi's the rookie of the year. He's the MVP. Illy's some insane young phenom. Then nobody ever talked about Hook. But Hook like led their team in kills basically for the year. He was insane. He was always dropping over a one. He was making plays. He went from being the dead silence player that was supposed to get kills. He took on the trophy and the smoke and was like kind of the OBJ player and still played insane. So I think underrated and underappreciated for Modern Warfare, uh, it's Hook undoubtedly in my mind underrated all time a guy that comes to mind he's not a pro anymore is j cap um people especially over the last few years i think that's what i'm gonna say actually i think the most underrated and underappreciated pro i mean people do call j cap the goat let's not get it uh, twisted at all but i think j cap's the most underappreciated underrated pro of all time um dude has two rings obviously you have to be great to get that um but people always call him trash like oh j cap always drops a point eight he's trash but if you go back and look at J-Cap's history, I didn't really watch too much, but people say he's the best Black Ops 1 player. Like, he was different on Black Ops 1. Um, then think, like, Champs started in Black Ops 2. He made it to the Champs um, Grand Final and lost to Frico Impact on Envy Team that had, like, Stainville, Rambo, um, and, God, oh my God, who's the last player? Uh, Proofy. Uh, not an insanely good team at the time. They were pretty good, though. Uh, and then Ghost, I believe he made it decently far, not to the final. AW, he wins it with replays, Attach, and Clay. Um... And then BO3, he goes back to back and wins it. So in the first four champs, he was he lost a final, didn't make it to the final, and then won the next two finals. Then in IW, he goes to his third straight grand final with Envy and loses that. Grand, he kind of cost in that final, but still. So five champs into Call of Duty, he's been in three, no, four finals, and he's two and two in the finals. And then World War II, um, I believe his LG team did pretty well. They finished like top four, top six, something like that. So another really good placing. Um, and then he obviously comes into Black Ops 4. They should have beat on that uh, that EG team. They should have beat United in like winner's semis or winner's quarters or something. And they probably would have made it all the way with the easy bracket they would have had. They probably would have made it to like winner's semis, winner's final. They would have made like top three, um, especially without that placement. I think J-Cap would be like number one all time in placement. So I think j is the most underappreciated pro and shout out to him. Uh, he retired. I can't really think of anybody else off the top of my head that's somebody that's super underrated, underappreciated. Like guys like Karma, he, he was underrated during the Optic Dynasty, but everybody calls him the GOAT, so he's not underrated. Um, I can't really think of anybody. I was going to say like Aches, but people do know that Aches is an all-time great. Um, I'm trying to think of somebody like more like low-key, John kind of comes to mind. Ap Apathy comes to mind too. Another two-time champ, been in a bunch of finals. Um, he went back-to-back -back final. He went. I mean, he was in three straight finals. He was in the BO3 final, the IW final, and the World War II final, and he won two of them. Yeah, Apathy comes to mind. John kind of comes to mind. Jcat. The whole Envy roster is pretty underrated. Uh, Slasher, but he everybody knows he's great. So yeah, I think that that's what I'm gonna go with. Um, shout out to Kyle for sending these questions. Obviously, Luke sending the questions. Uh, if you have any questions that you want to drop down below, I could answer those or save them for another video. Um, but that's going to do it for this one. Uh, yeah, I want to get at least one content piece out a week, whether it's like a tier maker video, um, a COD history video, a Q&A like this, a podcast on roster news. Um, but we've got, it's September, we've got until um, November until we start having like news about the Call of Duty League. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it for this Q and a, it went a little longer than I wanted to, but like I said, I knew it would, um, yeah, that's going to wrap it up. Um, I'm going to look to get some other content piece out. If you guys had any ideas on what you want to see me, uh, do for the next content piece, comment it down below and maybe, maybe we'll see it there. I've been taking some of the ideas you've been offering cause they've been pretty darn good. So once again, shout out to Kyle and Luke for the questions. Um, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoy. This has been the CDL podcast channel. I'm Ryan. Um, be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed comment down below. Like I said, uh, subscribe if you're new We're on the road to 200 subs, kind of gaining attraction a little bit more again, um, after a slow end to the month of August on the channel. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for the support and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next content piece we put out on the CDL channel. Thanks for watching.